In this video, I'm going to recap the trading action that we had during the regular trading hours on the Micro ES Futures uh, for Tuesday, the 16th of January, 2024. You can find my referral links in the description box below. Apex Trader Funding is currently running an 80% off sale, one day to pass. If you're interested, sign up using the description box below. Okay guys, so we're going to just look at the regular trading hours on the 10 minute chart. Um, I happen to like the 10 minute chart, but you could also use the five minute or the 15 minute chart. We're breaking up the regular trading hours into our standard three session model. The standard three session model is the AM session from the New York Stock Exchange open at 0930 uh, New York local time. The lunch session, which is from 1200 to 1330, that's a 90 minute lunch session. And then the PM session from 13.30 to when the uh, market closes at 1600. <clears throat> okay, so first I'm going to describe the market action and then I'm going to look at some uh, trading ideas that you could have had to capitalize on the market action. So as we opened up in the from the overnight session, we can see that we formed a regular trading hours gap and we initially traded for the first 30 minutes lower and the market traded down to a low of 47.83 halves. The market then turned around and for one, two, three, four, five, six, for an hour straight, traded higher, filling in that regular trading hours gap and made our intraday session high at 48.15 halves, which it paired later, but that, that high of the day was formed at 10.50 New York local time. So our high of the day today came in during the AM session. As the AM session came to an end, the market started to trade lower and traded mostly lower during the first half of the lunch session. <clears throat> the market formed another low during the lunch session at 47.87, uh, excuse me, at 47.88 evens. You can see I'm looking at the top left of my screen, 47.88 evens. And then the market had a, a little bit of a lunch rally coming into the PM session. As the PM session began, we were initially, we opened up the PM session at 47.99 quarters. We then had about 50 minutes or about an hour trading lower and we formed our low of the day at 14.10 New York local time. And that low of the day came in at 47.79 halves. We then had a rally in the PM session and we paired our, we paired our lunch high, which you can see here. Now, Applying some of our uh, ICT, uh, ICT models, let's see uh, some of the trading ideas that we could have had. So, looking at our regular trading hours, um, I wouldn't have been in the market initially, I will tell you that, because I try to enter in on limit orders. But we had a fair value gap here, and you can see that that fair value gap could have gotten you in our initial move lower. So I'm gonna highlight that for you over to the left. So, our initial move lower, you could have been long from somewhere, somewhere in the highlighted area. Our next opportunity came as a short opportunity, and let's see some of the models that I can, we can find. So using our horizontal line tool, which is on the top left, let's take our high of the day, which we paired, so we made it twice. And let's see what patterns we, we can see on the left. We'll also take the close of the candle. So we're looking for patterns to the left. The first thing that sticks out to me, guys, is we obviously fully refilled in the regular trading hours gap. So the regular trading hours gap is not necessarily my favorite pattern, but it is a pattern that you should be aware of. And the regular trading hours gap was fully filled in today. And had you placed in a limit sell order at the regular trading hours gap, you would have had an excellent short opportunity. In addition to that, let's see if we have some other candle patterns that I can recognize on the left that would have entered you short here. We have a long wick inefficiency here, and then rejection block here, although I don't know if you would have seen that. Um, and we have a bearish uh, inverted fair value gap far to the left. So I'm highlighting three different patterns. Um, I'm gonna call this a rejection block. It could also be called an order block as well. But three different patterns that could have gotten you in at the ultimate high of the day. The regular trading hours gap, the long wick that you can see on this candle, 
the order block or rejection block that you see here. And finally, we have a, we have a, in addition to that, we have another long wick here, and we have a, a bearish inverted fair value gap as we cut through candles. So, as you can see, you had uh, a few different patterns that could have gotten you in short for our lunch session move lower. In addition to that, as the market came back up higher and it paired our high, that would be a rejection block right there, okay, and a regular trading hours gap there. So, multiple ideas there. The market then traded lower and made a pivot higher. It was it was it possible to trade this move higher right here from 47.87 up to uh, 48.01, which of course would be a 13 point trade, so a, a very respectable trade. Um, yes. Okay, so we have a rejection block here, and then we have that same fair value gap here, a fair value gap here, which would be a balanced price range. Okay, so a few different indications, but immediately that rejection block could have gotten you in long on that on that move. Uh, the next move that the market made as it pivoted into the PM session is that we tr we traded lower. Could you have uh, potentially gotten in on a short there? All right, well. As we can see, the market pivoted where my crosshair is. That was a fair value gap there. That was a long wick inefficiency here, fair value gap here, fair value gap here, and a long wick inefficiency here. So multiple different patterns that you could have spot to take the short here. Our last trading uh, sort of opportunity on the day was a long as we formed a, a low of the day. And using our horizontal line tool, Let's try and see if you could have gotten in long for the final uh, final sort of pivot of the day. As we look back to the left, we can see that this was just about the 50% of that trading range. So we'll call that trading range the low from the high, uh, you know, using a trading range as a pattern. So trading range here. And you can see that the market pivoted right on that 50% point of this prior trading range. This would be a rejection block. Um, also, you can see that we have a dense trading range here. The 50% point of that would have been a nice trade. We also see that we had a, a bearish or, or bullish order block here on the left as we cut through candles. And we were close to a fair value gap here far in, uh, from Monday, the 8th of January. So. As we cut left through the candles, could you have seen this long? I think the most realistic uh, pattern that you could have you could have spotted to get in long, where the market pivoted for its last uh, time during the day, was this rejection block here. Okay, and it was of course the 50% point of this uh, sort of dense trading range. As we traded into the PM session. Um, we see also that uh, we had an opportunity to get short right at that rejection block and this little fair value gap right here. Okay, finally, guys, I want to review my executions with you. So looking through our regular trading hours, we can see that I initially took along a little bit too early at 48.03 halves. Um, I was looking at this wick here. The market ended up trading higher. I took one more short at 48.06 uh, halves, and I was initially in drawdown. You can see I didn't I didn't hit it quite perfectly, but um, it was fine. I ended up taking a, a pretty decent trade on it, and then I ended up covering here at 47.90 quarters, right at about this rejection block. Later on in the day, you can see that uh, right as the market closed, I took another short, uh, which I held on into the electronic trading hours. So overall, uh, in my futures trading today, I did make a profit. Um, did I get it perfect? No, I didn't. I didn't get that regular trading hours entry perfect, but uh, overall, it still was a profitable trade. Uh, about a 13-point trade on those three contracts and a 16-point trade on the second uh, contract. And I don't typically like to scale in, but I did it this time because I had the margin. So anyways, guys, that is our futures market review and your opportunities for trading using the uh, regular trading hours for the trading day of Tuesday, January the 16th. Part of the purpose of me making these recaps is I'm trying to train you or, or train train my own and train your visual pattern recognition. Okay, so you always want to look at where the market pivoted and how you could have seen it. Where the market pivoted and how you could have seen it. So just look at where the market turned, 
Look to the left and see if there are any visible patterns that you can see. Over time, you will train yourself to see these patterns uh, before they happen. Okay, guys, that has been the Futures Market Review for Tuesday, January the 16th, 2024. Um, I want to end this video by talking about some of my thoughts here on the uh, daily chart. Okay, um, looking at our daily chart, the market looks very soft. Um, the market looks very, very soft. I think we are going to trade back down to about 47.32 quarters. Um, if the market does that immediately, I don't know. But I think the market's going to trade right through this fair value gap, get down to this rejection block. And looking at our daily chart, I would want to look uh, at this old fair value gap here. And I'm going to say, guys, I'd be looking at about 47.24 evens, potentially the rejection block here, 47.32 quarters. Um, I think the market is looking pretty, pretty damn soft. Uh, as I as I had mentioned to you before, um, overall, guys, you might take some intraday longs, but right now I'd be pretty leaning heavily on the short side. Okay, guys, that's my futures market review. Refer links in the description box below.